Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be part six of the Donkey Kong 3 restore. This is gonna be the final part. Um, that's all I have left to do on this cabinet is put the side art on. We need to put the monitor back in, put the coin door on, just put the upper and lower brackets in place for the marquee, put the light back in. Um, I gotta find out if I'm putting the wiring back in or not. I need to clean up the power supply, put that back in, uh, make a new power cord. Um, I'll leave the speaker out because it's the wrong speaker. We'll put the speaker grill in at least. Um, other than that, I think all the rest of it, uh, the guy's going to put together himself. So um, I just took the parts out of the parts tumbler. They've been in there for a week, I think. And they all turned out really nice. I mean, look at how nice these latches are. They look brand new. Um, these are the bolts for the monitor that go through the cabinet. All the chrome is nice and clean on them. Uh, these are the smaller ones for the coin door, all nice and clean. So everything's looking nice and uh, back to the way it should. Um, let's start with the coin door. Let's get that put back on and uh, we'll do the artwork towards the end because the artwork goes on then we can put the monitor in after the artwork. We don't want to put the monitor in first because we don't want to, because the carriage bolts will be in the way. So you want to put the artwork on first, then cut your holes for where the carriage bolts go and put your uh, monitor in. So let me grab the uh, coin door and we will start bolting this on. It's still hanging up in the spray booth from the other night. I did, uh, one second. Let me uh, turn the camera off for a minute while I untie that. Real quick though, I did wash the monitor yesterday when I got home. So look at how nice and clean that is, looks brand new. So that will go back in. We're not putting a monitor chassis on it. I had mailed it to him. He was getting it rebuilt, so he will take care of all that. Okay, here's the coin door, all nice and dry. Looks awesome. We're gonna put this on first. Grab my uh, sockets over here. I forget what size socket that is, but I thought I saved the ratcheting wrench, but I think I put it away. I'll have to get it back out because those couple in the bottom corner, you have to use that ratcheting wrench to get to it. So let's find our bolts for the door. There are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't understand why they did four on this side and only three on the hinge side, but whatever. That's just how they did the Nintendo cabinets. Well, I got three so far. Let me uh, at least get the coin door up there and get these three started. Then I'll hold it in place and then I'll get the wrench that I need and I'll dig out the rest of these uh, bolts that we need. I did talk to the shipper yesterday who's going to ship this. It's a guy I've been using a few times now. He does a really good job. Really reasonable priced. And I told him it'll be ready anytime after tomorrow. I'm just trying to give the paint a little bit more time to dry before I wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it up in moving blankets and then I'm gonna put shrink wrap around it. And then I, when I was at work, we had some cardboard and some little 90 degree pieces of cardboard that came off of some boxes of ceramic tile and I'm going to put those around the edges of the cabinet so that when uh, it gets strapped into the van or whatever it's getting picked up in um, it doesn't ruin the edges of the cabinet. Taking off this tape, I had taped off these uh, spots on the coin door so that it didn't get black paint on it. So I got two of these bolts in there, let me get this one in. You know what, let's just find them all and loosely put them in there. Then we can tighten them afterwards. Maybe I'll just tighten them off camera. But we'll at least get them in there. Get all these big brackets out of the way here. Not already.
I'll bet you they put these coin doors on before they put that shelf inside from the factory. They probably did. It's probably why it was so much easier. All these bolts turned out real nice. I always like to try to use the original hardware when I can. Sometimes you just can't. You don't, you're missing some of it or it's just beat up beyond fixing. But when I can, I definitely reuse it. Just something about trying to save all the original parts, you know? Is that? I don't know what that is. All right, I'm going to stop the camera for a couple minutes. I'm going to get my wrench, find the rest of the nuts, and tighten this coin door up. I don't see any point in me uh, having you guys watch me tighten up 11 bolts, or nuts rather. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, let's get the coin door lock on now. He had sent me these coin door locks so we can at least uh, have the doors locked the front and back so they're not flopping around while it's getting shipped. We have to put the coin meter and stuff back on the door too. Um, I'll have to see if it's clean or not. Might have to clean it up a little bit. Open lock. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So that'll be the lock position there. Beautiful. Let me go find uh, the uh, coin meter and the test switch so we can put that on. Okay. Now we can remount these. And find the screws for them. Dump these out, make it a little bit easier. They should be uh, machine screws. I think they're going to be the small ones. Need six of them. I think the coin meter had four on it.
maybe it only had two on the coin meter and then the other two were on the test switch because I'm only seeing four screws. Oh wait, the test switch uses bigger screws. Okay, we're good. Now I found out while using that tumbler with the Desert Blend crushed walnut shells, you're almost better off throwing them away after one or two uses rather than keep using them. Because when you keep using them, they turn into a fine powder and then they end up getting stuck in all your screw heads. I didn't realize that at first when I was using it and I kept reusing the media. But like for instance, on these parts, I used brand new bag Part of a brand new bag and there's no media stuck inside the screws because uh the pieces were bigger at that point and it's pretty cheap i want to say it's ten dollars a bag or so at the pet store and usually a bag will do two times so you're talking five five dollars you know it might be more expensive now it might be seven dollars a bag you know or fourteen dollars a bag or something like that but that's still only seven dollars and if you use it twice, you know, that's next to nothing. But yeah, I would say two times max on using that stuff over and then just throw it away. It's not worth sitting there trying to clean out all your screw heads. Okay, now we need two bigger ones for the test switch, which I just saw. I think this is one here, and then there should be one more. Where did it go? hate when you can't see it with all the other ones here because it's a service switch not a test switch my bad Okay, that's done. Now we have two sets of wires, which go to one coin counter and then to the other coin counter. So these ones are gonna go to that one and these ones are gonna go over to this side. Leave a little bit of slack because I don't know exactly where it goes. He's getting new ones. Just kind of put it in there and you can move it around if he needs to. But that should be good enough. And then this is going to go into the cabinet. Okay, we're done with that for now. Let's put the, uh, oh, let me, uh, put the plate on for the uh, 
control panel that goes like this right in here has four screws that hold that in let me make sure i use the right screws here Got to make sure that they're the size I need because I don't want to use the wrong ones. Okay. Now this metal plate only goes one direction. The top has rounded corners, the bottom is square. That'll let you know which way it goes in there. Plus, if you put it in the other direction, uh, the metal's probably not gonna stick up high enough. In fact, I know it won't. Okay, next we have the latches, which are these smaller screws. Should be these little ones here. Make sure I get them all. Should have sorted these out ahead of time. Can't really see what I'm doing in here, but. All right, I'm gonna stop this and get both of those finished screwing those in, then I'll come back. Okay, that is done. So those latches are in now. And the middle one's there, so we're good there. Let me grab the two for the uh, marquee. We'll put those on. Okay, let's put this upper one on.
Okay, our bottom one. Well, even with the new crushed walnut shells, I got a little bit in a few of these. Not as bad though. I think I grabbed the wrong screws. I think it's these shorter ones. Kind of hard to see and get to. Okay, grab that one I dropped in the back. Next, we could do the marquee light. And I'm not gonna mess with that, I'm just gonna screw it right back in because it's never been, I don't think the bulb's ever been changed or the uh, starter. So I'm just going to put it right back in there. As you can see, there's still tape on over the bulb and the starter. So I'll bet you this has never been changed. So we're going to leave it like that and see if it even works. It might work, it might not. But he can always change it and get a bulb if he needs to or a starter. Arcade shop sells them, I know. I'm sure Mike's Arcade sells them as well. two screws that hold that in.
This one has a little bit of walnut shells in it. I guess I was wrong. Definitely better, but still get a little bit stuck in there. Okay, that's on. Good there. Um, what do I want to do next? Um, I got to check the screen for the speaker and see what that looks like. I might need to spray paint it real quick. Okay, the speaker grill actually uh, looks good. So we're going to put that back in. We're just going to leave the screws. Uh, we're not going to put the speaker in there because I didn't have the right one in there. So I'm going to put the screws in about three quarters of the way. So that this doesn't fall out. But I don't want to go too far because then you'll go through the cabinet with the screw. Okay, speaker grill's in there for now. Um, we need to do uh, side art. I guess we can get the side art on and then we'll put the monitor in. Um, I need to route the wire for the uh, marquee light, which is right here. So we just need to put it around this. sit down there. Let's go ahead and get the uh, artwork on the sides. Let me go grab a tape measure and stuff so I can put each side on the same distance. Okay, this artwork came from this old game, the side art. That's all I'm putting on. Now this has pre-mask on it, so it has masking tape over top of it. So we're just gonna use a regular uh, Bondo spreader to put it on. I usually go three inches down from the top and kind of center it as much as I can from front to back. Probably should have laid this stuff out yesterday, but that's all right. Be a little bit curled. I'm going to measure to the red line, orange line, whatever color it is. Okay, that's at three inches. Two and seven eighths. That's actually pretty good there. Because this goes on an angle. So we're gonna leave it right there. So on the other side, we're gonna go two and seven eighths off the back and three off the top. from the factory they were with putting these on 
were they always the same height on every cabinet or did it vary a little bit by who installed them that day? You know, I just don't know. Kind of hold that up there with the free mask. No, maybe not. Hoping to. My knife. Want to cut this not against the cabinet. Keep it away. I should have grabbed a pair of scissors, but. I got a little fan going because it's hot. I'm gonna go grab a pair of scissors because I gotta cut that better than that. I can't leave it like that. All right. I don't push real hard at first. I just want to get it on the cabinet. Then we'll go back over it. And when there's pre-mask, you'll see wrinkles. That's in the masking, not in the sticker. I do like to rub my hand over it though, rather than just this, because I think it works better. The heat from your hand really helps push this down. Little, couple little wrinkles. I don't really know if you call them wrinkles or bubbles around the perimeter. Just push them down. holes for the bolts.
Okay. Now we can move over to the other side and put that one on. Three inches down again to the orange line. Two and seven eighths from the back, right on. This edge is a little wrinkled up here, but we should be able to get it out. It was like that in the tube. Air bubble right here. Once we take off the masking, we should be able to work that out. If not, we might have to put a little pinhole in it. this out. A little pinhole right in the black spot. Tiny little dot. Just to relieve the air. Beautiful. You'll never see it.
Yeah, they had a lot of wrinkles in that paper. Okay, now we gotta cut our bolt holes out. And when you put your monitor brackets in, you want to try not to tighten them too tight because you can wrinkle your artwork. Okay, let's put on the sticker on the front, the coin sticker. Now I know for a fact that these are usually never in the right spot or, you know, perfectly in the right spot. So we're going to try to eyeball it. We're going to measure it and then line it up with our eye. 22 and a half. So 11 and 11 is 22. 11 and a quarter is the center point. I'm using the center point of the arrow. Okay, that is on. So we are done with that now. So now I think we're ready to put the monitor in. We'll put the monitor in first. We'll put the couple bolts that go through the piece of plywood um, on the front of the monitor first, and then we can put the brackets on the side. I think that's probably gonna be the easiest way is to put these bolts in here first. Let me grab them. Three, four. I know I need five per side. So I have my side ones here. I need to find the ones for those. For some reason, I'm not seeing here. I don't know why. I'm pretty positive it was on these. It was in this cabinet. Um, all right, give me a minute. Let me look for those. Okay, they're still on the bottom of the monitor bracket. Okay, let me uh, put this up into there. I do like these monitors, how they have uh, that metal plate on the back, so you don't have to worry about the neck as much. I'll try to get this slid in here. Get those bolts through it. Yeah, because if this, this cabinet didn't have that on the neck, you know how many people We'll be breaking those necks off trying to get this in here. Probably would be easier to take the plate off of the monitor and put that on first. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this center one done. I don't think so. Let me mess with it and see if I can get those to push through. If not, I'm going to have to take that plate off. Okay, I got them to slide through. Let me show you how I did it before I bolt them in. So I was able to get the two outside ones in by sticking a screwdriver in here and get them pushed down. Then what I did was I went in the back here while those two were in there 
and I just tilted this monitor forward with those in there and I reached underneath the center of it and was able to push down that center bolt through the hole. So now all three are through. So now I don't have to worry about taking uh, that plate off the bottom of the monitor to bolt it in. So now I gotta find the nuts that hold that to the wood, which I think this is it right here. And we should be able to tighten this without an issue. Should. We got one on. Found some tape here I forgot to get off. Get that off before I forget. Find two more nuts and we can tighten those up. And then we can go put the side brackets on and uh, uh, then we're going to be on to the power supply, I believe. Then the back door. Um, we got to find out about the wiring. I don't think I'm doing anything with it. I don't know if Donkey Kong wiring is the same for one and three. I'm not sure. You know, original Donkey Kong wiring the same? I don't know. I would think it would be. But I thought other things too before it had been wrong. Another thing we need to do is make, I'm going to have to run to the dollar store and get some uh, poster board. I want to remake the screen, the part that goes around the screen, and then the part that hangs behind the screen. I like making new poster board because that old stuff is just cruddy. It's dirty. No matter what you do, it doesn't clean up. You know, it's 30, 40 year old paper, however old it is, 40 some year old paper. Yes, it tightened up. Good. I wasn't worried about the outside ones, I was just worried about that center one tightening without that screw spinning. This one might be spinning, but I can reach in there and grab it. Okay, beautiful. Those are tight. Let's uh, let's just spin the cabinet around. It'll be easier than me moving everything else. Now that we got those nice plastic sliders on here. So now, get the rest of these brackets on this monitor. Um, oh, you know what else? We have to put this bracket back on too for the, uh, to hold the glass in place. Um, oh, you know what? Okay, that's right. This one only has this top bracket and then we just put bolt holes in the other one because that's for the side brackets for when you put the monitor horizontal. That's right, I forgot about that. My Popeye had the bolts going down it because I had the other brackets that went this way, L brackets that went in there. But all these cabinets came with these bolts in case you did a conversion, which was pretty smart of them really if you think about it. You know, they set it up so that they knew that the monitor can be rotated without having to do any work other than brackets, you know. So I'm guessing, like, if you ordered a kit of a game for this game cabinet that was a uh, horizontal, I'm guessing they would have sent you the brackets to mount the monitor sideways. You know, I'm not sure. I don't know that much about Nintendo cabinets. But that would be my guess. But I know that they all came with the bolts all the way in the sides. I think that's a 10 millimeter. Yes, it is. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the three in that don't go anywhere. Like I said, don't over tighten these things because you will wrinkle the artwork. All you gotta do is snug them up. Even though the holes are square in the cabinet, for some reason, if you start torquing those down, they still want to wrinkle the artwork. I think it's just because it's drawing it into the wood so tightly that causes that. Okay, I'm gonna finish putting these bolts in on this side here. So, uh, I got interrupted there for a minute. 
Then we'll get these angle brackets in and get this monitor mounted the rest of the way, and then that's done. These are the angle brackets for the monitor. So these need to, the screw got to come out here. Now these are slotted, so as you're tightening it, push it all the way to the tight to the outside of the cabinet, or the side of the cabinet rather. Slid in. I had to push the bolt out a little bit because it was the head of the nut was hitting on that uh, Phillips screw. You could put those in afterwards so they don't get in the way. I think my socket will go around them though. If not, I can use a, a wrench for them. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a 10 millimeter wrench and tighten those last two up. Okay, we're gonna put this bar up top before I forget. Get this put back in place. Gotta get a couple wing nuts. I have my bracket. Two wing nuts here. I am going to tighten these just so it doesn't move all around.
Okay, that's on. I'm gonna have to run in the house here in a few and grab that piece of paper for the that goes here. And first, we're gonna put this uh, plate back on. Serial tag, whatever you want to call it. As soon as I find the screws for it. Okay. This is a little dirty, it's a little stained up, but I don't want to try cleaning it because you could take that black ink off of there and then screw it all up. So I'm going to go grab my stapler and one of those pieces of paper so I can staple that on there. Okay, let's staple on this uh, label here. This is the uh, warning label for radio communication and frequencies. We just printed up a bunch of these a while ago and I just staple them back on. I actually put a little bit of a satin laminate over top of it just to protect it a little bit more. Okay, that's done. Now we can start putting this power supply back together. And somebody had asked me about the power switch and stuff. So I got to make sure that I include that in this video on how it's wired. Um, because on the Popeye one, I really didn't pay much attention other than to plug it in. So I'll make a note of that on here so they can see what's going on. So we need to put this in first. And if I remember correctly, it goes this way. I'm trying to remember if it goes that way or the other way. Uh, it has to go this way because the plug's right there for the uh, marquee lights. No, it goes the other way. So it does go this way. Yep, doesn't fit the other way, so I guess I was wrong. There's a nut on this one. Okay. And then this just comes along here and plugs in. Okay. We gotta get the wing nuts for this. Should be four of them. I know there was at least three. I don't know if they had all four in this or not. Something's telling me they only had three on this. Uh, I'm only seeing three. I might have a fourth. I'll have to go look. I don't know that I have a metric one. And I'm sure these are probably metric threads. My uh, Popeye had uh, bolts or nuts, not wing nuts. So I thought that was a little weird, but I don't know. Oh, uh, you know what? I wonder if, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go see if I have another wing nut. that oh. all right I'll have to see if I have one later I don't have one out here but that doesn't mean I don't have one in the basement more than likely I probably do have one so now I need to get some nuts to hold that onto there and I believe those are seven millimeter
brick. That I might need to clean up a little bit. All right, I just gave it a wipe down. Now this goes this way. screws for that. Find those. Okay, that's in. We need to bolt this down. We need to screw this down. So you four nuts for the isolation transformer, two screws for the fuse holder. I grabbed the wrong ones. It'll be the longer ones. There we go. Put our plastic cover back on. Um, I got the parts in for Satan's Hollow. I got the free plate chip and I have the battery for the score to save the high scores. So I'll make a video on that. And we have to put the ground wires on everything. I forgot to put the ground wires on all the components inside the cabinet. So we got to do that. And then that game will be completely done. And then we are on to um, Sinistar. We're going to get that wrapped up. Then the next two projects are going to be Bubbles and um, Stargate. Because I want to finish up my Williams games. And those are the last two that I have is the Stargate and Bubbles.
this one right here in the back is a little bit difficult to get to. But I think I might have gotten it. Um, I have almost all the parts for uh, Paperboy. Waiting on a few more things to come in the mail. Um, the only thing I'm going to be missing is side art. And I'm kind of torn if I want to use the original System 2 side art or if I want to use the custom Paperboy side art. Side art. I'm kind of leaning towards the custom side art that says Paperboy and it's got the bike and everything on it just because I think it looks cool. And it's, once again, it's really not going to hurt anything cabinet wise. It's just a full side vinyl. Um, it can always be taken off and the original one put back on. Um, I don't know, I just think it looks cool. You'll probably never see the side of the cabinet, but I don't know, I mean, I don't think it's much difference in price between the two. Let me know what you guys think about that uh, Paperboy side art, if you would use the original or that custom one that they made. Okay, that is bolted in. Now, on this switch here, that's not gonna clean up, that's just corrosion. But here's your on off switch and here's your fuse. Now on the back side, we have one wire right here, this white and brown wire plugs into the fuse block right here. And then you have this other yellow and white wire right here, and this yellow and white wire plugs into the, um, this right here plugs into the power supply, I believe. Yes. Yeah, okay, so this three terminal here, hey look, I found a nickel, I'm rich. Um, this right here, this three prong one with the yellow and white plugs into the back side of the power supply here. And then there are straps right here that we have to screw it down to the wood. So that goes in here, that's plugged in. So now when this goes into the back of the cabinet, our brown and white wire plug into here, and then our wire power cord coming from outside the cabinet plugs in to the yellow and white. Um, the guy was asking me some question about a resistor or something, or I, I don't know um, what exactly he was talking about, but this is the cover that covers the switch up, and this is what's inside the switch here. Um, I don't really know much about what's going on in here. There's so much silicone on everything, you can't see much of it, but... Um, Looks like the brown wires on the side that says on, yellow wires on the side that says on, and then this side has a blue wire, which is across from the yellow, and then there's a white wire, which is across from the brown. So I don't know if that helps. The brown wire is in the position at the bottom if the switch were to the off position. That's where the brown goes. If it's in the on position, that's where the yellow goes. So hopefully that sort of answers his question. I'm not quite sure he had, I, I'd have to read through it again, but um, there's really not much more going on with this than that. So we're gonna screw this into the back of the cabinet and uh, it goes in from the back forward. So I gotta get some screws for this. Four screws go into that. Grab those.
Once I get a few more things on, I'm going to have to run to the dollar store and grab some poster board. And then we'll get that stuff made and stapled in, double-sided taped on. Okay, now when this wire goes through the cabinet here, we got to make a new cord. Um, this ground wire right here goes on to a lug. There's a metal lug on the back of this switching plate that gets a, um, a nut put on it. And that's where this goes to. And then there's a bunch of green wires that, that are basically going to jump from there to here to the power supply to the PCB, to the coin door, to the control panel. But um, I'm probably gonna leave that out and let him put those on because I don't know exactly how he wants to route those or not. So what we're gonna do now is let's take this plug end off of here. I'm gonna reuse this plug end. We'll have to pin new wires because we need to make a new cord because I cut this one because it was all messed up. So we're gonna pull this apart. We're gonna make a new uh, wire and then we can get all that plugged in. And I'll show you how that plugs in. So let me grab a new wire here and my tools. Oh, we still gotta do T-molding too. Yeah, put that on still. So now what we need to do is try to get this apart, which is usually a pain in the butt. Um, sometimes I'll get lucky and it'll slide out, but Probably not today. I mean, in theory, it's supposed to slide out. doesn't. Maybe I'm wrong. thought my Popeye one slid out. Maybe it spins this way. thought this end opened up. I don't remember. And I just did it too on the Popeye. Don't remember how I did it. Ah, there we go. Squeeze it together. Okay, now that that's out, and we can pop this apart and get the wire out. Like that, there we go. I want to reuse this sleeve, and I'm going to have to get an uh, an end to crimp on. 
the green wire, the new green wire. Let's let's pop these pins out real quick. Wrong size, need the bigger one. I think it's the biggest one. Yep. Okay, so now we need to strip the new wiring to that length. Here's a new piece of wire right here. I'll lay this down. Don't, it's got to be close to right there. Trying to just carefully cut the outside casing without nicking the wires inside. Just got to barely put pressure down. Just enough to give you enough to pull it apart. This is some new, uh, I don't know if this is 16 or 18 gauge. This is 16 gauge. So 16.3. Um, I buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. They sell it by the foot in the electrical section. It's just uh, extension cord wire. Okay, we have that. Now let's put that sleeve on there before we start messing with putting ends and stuff on. So we gotta get the two white ones to go all the way through and then the green one goes out the hole. I think it goes this way. Okay, so now we gotta grab this green wire in here. Just like that. Let's untangle it. Okay. Now we can strip these and put new ends on them. Let's cut them both the same length. Okay, these are 093 females. Stupid. I gotta get a new uh, headlamp. It's gonna be my third one. They keep, I don't know what's wrong with them, they keep breaking. This one just likes to go from high to low by itself. Just randomly changes.
Okay. Now we can put the plug end back on and we want to make it so that the white lines up with the white and then the black goes with the um, yellow. So I'm going to kind of plug this in here, see which direction it goes. So white is on the right side. So we'll slide our white in here. Okay, and then clip our black one in. Beautiful. So now those are in. We're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to run in the house and grab a ring for this. Crimp one of those on here for the ground. Um, let's put this plate back together. So we need to put, uh, I gotta remember how I did it. Um, This can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially with the new wire because it's a little bit thicker insulation. going slowly. Okay, so we are in there. Now this has to go through here. Uh-oh, did I screw up? No, I did not screw up. Now we can screw that in. As soon as I find my screwdriver. This is our plug. We plug that into the yellow and white. That's hooked up. We'll go grab a ground terminal here in a minute. We'll put that on that back lug and then that'll be done. Now we got to put a plug end on this. I thought I brought one out here, but it must not have. So I will grab that with the ring terminal that I needed. So I'll go grab those now. We'll get that put on. Then we got to mount the brackets right here for the PCB. There's two PCB brackets that go on here, front and back. We'll put those on. There are two wing nuts that have a stud on them. 
These go into the power, into the circuit board. We're gonna put these inside of his uh, coin bucket because we obviously don't have the PCB, so we're not gonna worry about putting that in there right now. So let me go grab what I need and we'll finish up this power wire. Okay, let's put this uh, ring terminal on here first. These are heat shrink ends. Okay, that'll go on to that terminal here in a few. I wanna get this uh, plug-in put on first. And then you gotta make sure when you put these plugs together that this brass piece hits that, that spring inside there. That's your grounding lug. So feed this through. Your um, silver screw is your white. Your gold screw is your black. And then obviously your green screw is your green wire. And if you put your wire on the right side of the screw, if you're looking at the screw, put the wire on the right side of the screw because as you tighten the screw, your screw is spinning this way. It draws your wire into the connector better. If you put it on the left side, when you tighten it, you have the risk of the, the wire wanting to pop out because the screw will be driving it outwards. Now we'll line up this with that spring and we'll know we're in the right direction. Just like that. Okay, beautiful. Now we can tighten this clamp up which will hold our wires together. I always, because you can see barely where I strip the casing, I try to shove it in there a little bit and then tighten it down because then you're clamping just the insulation and you're not gonna hit any of those other wires.
Okay, now we have a nice solid end on here. All brand new wire, nothing to worry about with that. Just throw that in there for now. Let's put these L brackets on for the PCB. Which those go over here. L brackets here. Actually, I could put the wing nuts on these. They are threaded. I gotta grab the other wing nut. It's up on the bench over there. I had found it in the cabinet right before I got ready to paint. So we could put these on here. We'll just tighten them down so that we don't lose them in the process. So now I gotta find my screws for this. I'm just using a hand screwdriver today rather than my drill, just to make sure I don't strip any screws out. This other one's a reach, it's in there pretty far. extra bolts for the uh, coin mex. I'm just going to throw them in his uh, coin tray here in case he wants to reuse them. So that he has them. Okay, now I need to screw down these wires in here. Oh, you know, we've got to plug the brown and white wires in. So those are plugged in. I want to screw down these uh, wires back here. Okay, that's done. We're almost done with this. Let me grab that other wing nut before I forget about it.
Okay, that's tight in there. We need the bottom bracket for the PCB. I'm gonna go blow it off, it's kind of dusty. I'm gonna go give it a blow, blow it off with the blow gun real quick. Okay, the screws are still in the wood. Hopefully I can get my uh, screwdriver in there. Originally this was glued and screwed. But I don't think it needs to be screwed or glued in there in case for some reason you want to take it out. Okay, so that's done. Um, so now we need to put this goes on the front of the coin box so that when you shut it, these two, you could put a lock on there if you want to. Now we gotta put this on. Grab the key. You might need a stubby screwdriver for this. Might make it. Okay. I don't really know how well this would have worked back in the day just half inch plywood probably could just rip the whole box right out okay so now that's done this is our uh let me grab this this is the ground wires i was talking about here once i get them untangled uh, they're wrapped around the camera, tripod, and wrapped around other wires. So these are all the ground wires right here. Let's go in the back and at least hook up a few of them. We're obviously not going to be able to hook them all up. Actually, we can hook up quite a bit of them because I think it just goes to the latch on the control panel, if I remember correctly. Just try to wipe these off real quick. Just get some of the dirt off of them. There's these three that are right next to each other. And I believe these three go here, here, and I think it goes to the top of the power supply. I'm trying to remember.
seems kind of tight. Oh man, now I gotta try to get that out. I'm not convinced this is on right. The wire seems too tight for me. Something's not right with that. I wonder if this end goes down here. Makes more sense. switch it around. two ground wires to the back of the switch plate. way. These should go that way. This should go up to the monitor. I'm just going to leave those loose for now. good there. We're actually going to have to leave this out of the cabinet unless I take the plug end off, but I think we'll be okay. All right, so now that's done. Okay, um, what else do we have to do then? Put the lock on the back door and 
forgetting something. Oh, make the cardboard pieces. So let's uh, do the lock on the back door now. And go grab the back door. Okay, since we didn't have a back door, he had ordered this plate, but they didn't give me any screws, so I had to grab some screws. Just wanna see which way I wanna put this plate. This way, okay. So what we need to do is put this plate, screw it in here, line the hole up. it doesn't matter which way let's get that nut tightened up after this we're gonna put the team molding on and then I will run out and uh, grab uh, the poster board. Then we'll finish this thing up. Okay. Now we can put our lock on. if it fits on the cabinet. I might have to drill that hole a little bit bigger for the wire. I don't know if I drill it big enough. Maybe. Beautiful. Okay, let's do the T-molding. I'm gonna get this spun around and set up and we'll put the T-molding on next. Okay. Now, he ordered T-molding, and I don't know where he got it from, but it's flat. It's the right T-molding. Um, I, th I think he said he got it from somewhere in Michigan, and it comes in two pieces. And there should be a piece left over for the front of the control panel, I would think. I would hope. Um, and I don't know where he got it from. On this one, I think I want to start on the bottom and go work my way up. We might have to put a staple in the bottom, I'm not sure yet. stuff.
somebody had asked me the other day um, if I notch my inside or outside corners. I do when I need to. Um, Nintendo cabinets, you usually don't have to. They uh, seem to work good without having to do that. Just wiping off any uh, black scuff marks from the rubber mallet. I might have to grab a little bit of lacquer thinner and wipe it down. So now we can cut this flush up here and we go put the other side on. Here's our ex one extra piece. Well, I'll make sure I give him both of these extra pieces so he has them for the, he only needs one for the control panel, but just so he has it. Oh, you know what? They gave me a separate piece for the control panel too. Well, I have a couple pieces left over then. I might uh, order this stuff for my cabinets and replace mine. Only two of my Nintendo cabinets are real. The other three, I made them, I built them. So I can only put this on two of them if I do. Because the other cabinets, one of them's Cuphead, one of them is um, uh, Fix-It Felix. I just built new cabinets for those. I didn't want to use original Nintendo cabinets for those games. I thought it would be just better to just make my own. Man, it's just stuff twisted up. Jesus. Okay, let me go grab a little bit of lacquer thinner on my rag. I'm just going to lightly wipe off the black marks. Okay, now this cabinet has clear coat on it. I still want to be careful with my lacquer thinner, but if I hit it for a second, it's not going to hurt it. But this takes that black scuff mark from that rubber mallet right off. Makes it look really nice and white. You can see just a tiny bit on the rag. So I think that's all we have left to do are make those two cardboard parts and this project is done. So I'm going to go grab what we need. We'll cut those, put them on, and I just got to package up this stuff for him. Going to get the cabinet all uh, covered in moving blankets and uh, shrink wrap and those corner protectors. I'm going to put all those on there and this thing will be out of here. So I'll see you guys here in a little bit. I'm going to go run and grab poster board. Okay, let's get these new pieces of poster board cut here. First thing I want to do is measure the width and the height. 22 and 3 eighths wide. Grab a new piece here. 22 and 3 eighths wide. This is 22 and an eighth, so we're going to have to go the other direction. So 22 and 3 eighths, and we'll mark it.
Okay, there's our width. Now we got to figure out the height. So we got to unfold this. And we have a height of 15 and a half. So now we got to turn it and go 15 and a half up. Okay, now we got to make the notch in the back for where the um, that bar goes for the glass. I'm just going to use my knife here and mark it. Then I'll go over it again. Just running it right on the edges. Okay. And then I have to mark. There looks like there's a single bend here. And it goes backwards. Okay. So this, oh, it goes forward. Okay, so that bend comes forward. So first, let me finish cutting out this notch, which I think I cut deep enough. Okay, now I know that that bend is at the bottom of this notch. So that bottom of the notch is one and three quarters down. So we'll come over here at one and three quarters, make a little slit, but we're not going to cut all the way through. So all we're doing is making a little mark. And then we're going to take this one side and roll it up against the straight edge and use your fingers to bend it. Just like that. Repeat the same process over here. Hold that straight edge nice and tight. Okay. So there's our back piece. There's our new back piece. Now we need to make the screen part, which is right here. Now they staple this together right on that one part where the slit is, but we're not gonna staple it. We're gonna use this very thin double-sided tape when we put it together and we'll tape that seam together. So first thing I need to do is let's cut it to the size of the outer shape. So we're going to measure up here because this is one consistent piece. It doesn't have a slit in it. So obviously the width here is going to be different than the width here because they put a slit there and it's separated. So 22, this is actually 22 and a quarter. That back piece was 22 and 3 eighths. So we're going to go 22 and a quarter by 21 and 7 eighths. So 22 and a quarter, I believe I said. 22 and a quarter. Mike's Arcade used to sell these. I don't know that he does anymore. I think the last time I looked, they were, uh, weren't available. But that was a while ago, so he might sell them. You know, if you don't have one to use as a template, it's going to be a little hard to make. The back piece is easy because I gave you the measurements, but unfortunately, I can't really give you the measurements of the center of the screen because I just don't know. I mean, how I would measure that and give that to you. Um, so our height now is 21 and 7 eighths. Go 21 and 7 eighths. Basically just taking a quarter inch off of this. Now, the um, inside of this poster board has a little white band. You can go to, like, um, Hobby Lobby or something like that and get poster board with a black center. But we don't have one local, so I just use this stuff. It'll be fine. So now we're going to lay this on top of what we just cut. 
make sure we put it on the right direction just like this the reason why they make this slit here is so that you can overlap it and it it conforms to the curve of the tube but it's in, in all reality it should just be the same width it's just cut so that you can bend it so what i'm doing now is lining up my corners my edges and then we can cut out this center. Now the center, I'm gonna to have to kind of free it, free it, freehand it because it's all curves. There's really no straight line to it. So what I'm doing is trying to just hold this as steady as I can. And you don't have to be perfect with it. I mean, as long as you're real close, you're never going to notice it. And I'm not trying to cut all the way through it. I'll go back over it afterwards. Just trying to get it traced. I don't want to use a marker or anything because if I miss when I cut, then I have like a line stuck on there that I really can't get rid of. And now I just screwed this up. Well, I can turn it over, and I'm lucky that I missed the thing right there. There was double-sided tape stuck to that old one. Luckily, I shouldn't have a problem with using it on the other side. I didn't even think that was still sticky. I guess I did cut deeper than I thought. And then I got lucky with this one, I think. Okay, so now if I spin this over, yep, we're fine. Think, thankfully we're all right. So I'm just gonna make a slit right here in the center, straight down. And then we can use that to conform to what we need. So now we have both of these made. We can go out there and install these and I believe we will be done with this project and getting ready for the next. So, all right, I'll see you guys back out in the shop. Okay, let's put some, uh, Double-sided tape on the screen first here. Just going to cut a couple pieces. I cleaned off the old tape that was on here. Now you don't want to go down too far. You want to keep it towards that top edge. You could fold it over the edge. It doesn't matter. Or you can cut these in half, which I might just cut this in half. Might be a little bit easier to have it only half the width. This stuff is really sticky and it's very, very thin. We use this stuff to make banners to roll the edges over rather than sewing the edges of a banner. You put this tape between it and you roll it over on top of itself and it sticks. So you can see how it just stick into the scissors even. So we're just gonna come basically a little bit over the metal onto the picture tube, the rest of it is on the metal edge. You can kind of see where the old one was, but look at that screen, zero screen burn. I mean, that's impressive. Look at that thing, nothing. Not very often you find a Nintendo monitor with no screen burn. I think you can order this tape on Amazon. I don't know if the back of the roll says what it is. I don't think it does. I'm not sure. Okay, now I'm not gonna peel the other side off yet. Let's test fit that piece of cardboard in here. Okay. 
Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the center top piece. Now this is going to be a pain to probably peel off. Eh, maybe not too bad. I just don't really have any fingernails, so it's kind of hard to grab it. So let's start with just taking that piece off and dropping this as centered as we can onto that piece. Basically, once it's stuck, it's stuck unless you rip your poster board and start over. So that's good there. So now we're just gonna work it around. We're gonna work on this whole side all the way down. Now, when we do this side coming down, I wanna to try to get it to the closest to the edge of the cabinet as I can. They, they cut it a hair narrower than the cabinet on purpose because if it was a perfect tight fit on the edges of the cabinet, if you were slightly off in any direction, it'll be buckling along the edge. Okay, so this side's peeled off. So now I'm gonna kind of carefully fold this over and I wanna try to just run it straight down the side of the cabinet, just like that. Just like that. Oops. Okay. I got a little bit of paper right here I gotta get off. I'll get that off after. Okay, let's uh, do this side now. We'll do the bottom last. Then after this, we just gotta put that piece on the back and we can call this one done. I really want to try to get um, Cinestar done this weekend, if possible. I don't know how possible it's going to be. And uh, as far as doing another walkthrough of the arcade, since all these new games have been being put in there, um, it's going to be a little tight when we do the walkthrough because I still haven't taken down those walls that I want to take down yet. I haven't had time. I want, I'm going to expand the arcade a little bit more. So I want to take some walls down and move some games around. But when we do the tour of the arcade, it'll just be a little tight because there are some racing games and stuff that need to be moved. But for now, it'll be all right. But I think I'm going to wait to do the tour of the arcade until I hit 1,000 subscribers. I think I'm at 920 now. So another 80 subscribers. And I think at that point, I'm going to do a, another walkthrough of everything. All right. Um, I'm going to put up one more piece of double-sided tape between that seam right there to just kind of hold it together. Just a little piece here, nothing big. It's actually holding pretty good. Okay, now I gotta get this out of our side peeled. But we have a lot of good restoration videos coming up, in my opinion, as far as what games they are and stuff. So hopefully you guys keep watching and We'll get some of these cool ones done. We got Paperboy, we have uh, Burger Time, we have Gorf. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. I can't even really think of them all right now. I know there's at least a dozen or so to do. So there's that new uh, screen bezel. I think it looks really nice. Uh, it's all nice and tight everywhere. Let me grab a razor blade and we will trim that edge down that I got a little bit of paper on because I had to slightly peel it up. Just cleaning that off, the fuzzes. And now we're gonna go around back and put that back piece on, which gets 
once again this double side tape and it's going to get um, a few staples and that'll hold it in place so it doesn't fall off. So we need to cut two strips of this. We will put it on here. A couple staples I forgot to get out and just wiggle them back and forth until they break. There we go. Okay, now I need to peel this tape. Beautiful. Let's throw a couple staples up there. Got to get it around this cord for the marquee. Kind of hanging up on the marquee cord right here. There we go. All right, let's throw this back back on. Stick these right inside there for now. All right, guys. We are officially done with this one. So this wraps up the Donkey Kong 3. It is ready to get wrapped up and sent on its way. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, we have a lot of projects coming up. And uh, I'll keep finding more if you guys are interested in watching more videos. Um, I know some of it's kind of like repetitive but uh, they, at least they're all different games. And you know, it's not like I'm building the same one or restoring the same one over and over. So um, hopefully you guys are liking what you're seeing. Um, if you are, please like, subscribe, send any questions or comments. I try to respond to everybody who sends me a comment, um, at least a thumbs up, if anything. You know, just want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm, you know, watching uh, the comments and everything. And, Greatly appreciate everybody's uh, support and uh, comments and everything. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. This ends the Donkey Kong 3, and I will see you guys tomorrow.